Hello, welcome back to Mark's House and Garden UK. I'm digging a trench because I'm converting the garage behind me into luxury ancillary accommodation for my cottage, which is behind the camera. And I'm sharing that whole journey with you in videos on YouTube. Now, you would be surprised how much I have learned already just in the process of digging a trench and I'm going to share that learning with you in this video. But just to give you an insight into what I'm doing, that garage block has a loft above it which will be converted into an office. Downstairs there will be a bedroom and a gym and an ensuite. There will be a new boiler and electric heating. Everything in there has to be insulated. I'm going to be putting bifolds on where the garage doors are and the outside is going to be clad a lot of learning and I've already started learning and I'm sharing the learning with you in this video. Let's get back to digging this trench. Effectively, I have to dig two trenches. One of the trenches is bringing the electricity from the cottage to the garage. And the other trench is bringing the drains from the garage into the septic tank just behind me. Now, fortunately, I can use both trenches for both purposes. So the electric cable which comes from the cottage will go down the trench that has the drains in it to the back of the garage. Right. The electric cable has to be two feet deep. So one of the first things I've done is I've made a little guide. That's a piece of wood. That's a horizontal plank. And that is two foot deep. You can see it's not deep yet, deep enough yet. Whereas if I move it to here, we're getting there. Simple thing like that makes it so much easy to know when I've got to my two foot. And that's always to hand. Right, I've put some weed fabric down here where I'm piling the soil so that it will be easier to put that soil back into the trench when the cable's in the bottom. I'm not doing the cabling, my electrician is doing the cabling. I'm not qualified to do that and I would never attempt electrics, but the electrician has told me that the trench has got to be two feet deep. The weed fabric there will stop that soil infiltrating into the gravel. Now I have quite a selection of tools here and I'm going to show you them each as I use them, as I demonstrate. But suffice it to say, all these tools are available on my Amazon storefront. There is a link at the end of this video to my Amazon storefront and a link in the description box below. Whilst I'm talking about the description box below this video, I will put these down in a list, these tips I'm giving you. So the next thing is, get the gravel out of the way. I want to reuse this gravel. It's going to go back over. All this has got to be reversed. Once that cable's in, the trench is going to be full back in again. So anyway, I want the gravel to go back on. So I've used a rake, a simple garden rake, to drought the gravel onto one side of the hole, the opposite side of the trench to where the soil is going so that it's not mixed in. And when it's all done, of course, I'll be able to push that back on top. Now, you have to break the surface and it's compacted. So I've got this heavy duty hoe and I'll show you how it works. This surface here is very compacted. I'm using the corner first to get in. I am breaking through weed fabric. But as you can see here, I'm making good progress and I'm already down into the soil. And when you're into the soil, you can start to use it horizontally. And it's great. It's a great tool. Again, available in the storefront. That's the first part of the process of digging the trench. So don't forget, use the corner first to break through and then carry on using it as normal. Now, there is a smaller version of this called a grubbing hoe, which is also very effective on a good long trench like this. You're much better off with a bigger one. That's really helped to break through the ground. Now, 
you can get trenching spades. My neighbour's got one. He offered to lend it to me, but I forgot to borrow it from him. And now he's gone on holiday. So I'm using my own spades. But these trenching spades are long, narrow, deep ones. And they do make this job a little bit easier. My neighbour also has a mini digger and did offer to do this with a mini digger. This cottage is 450 years old. There's all kinds of pipes and wires and services in the ground here. So I'm reluctant to use a mini digger. So I ought to have said at the beginning of this, the first thing you really should do before you start digging is try your best to work out where your pipes and your wires and your services and your water pipe is. Inevitably, there will be something underground that you don't want to damage. I've already established where mine are. Go back, that should be point number one. Once you know where they are, you can kind of push ahead. But if you don't know where they are, you've always got to keep it in mind that there might just be where you're about to dig. You don't want to go through a water pipe. Now, this is a long-handled Irish spade and I'm using this for the first part of the dig. Probably the first foot. It's slightly wider. After I've got a foot down, I go to a narrower one. It's got a nice sharp point on it, which makes it quite easy to push it down into the earth. Nice long handle, so you can use that to get some leverage. And I've hit a stone there, but I'll kind of wriggle my way around it. And already there, I'm into some nice soft earth. I'm going to use that again to whack away at that. Just to... Long handled Irish spade and we threw into the subsoil, at which point life gets a lot easier on the digging. Now this is a wider spade than my other spade, which is helpful because it will make it easier to get the other spade down into the depths of the hole. But you can see there already, soil is quite easily and quite readily coming out of this trench. Now, occasionally, you might just hit something solid. So, go back a step. Bring your two on the job. And it shows, there we are, a bit of concrete, a bigger lump. That's why I was struggling with a spade. But you soon get past that. And then, once again, you can return to your long handle spade and get down into some nice soft earth wriggling and pushing using my weight and we're already getting down now this spade is going to take me down even at ground level you can see there i'm going down a good eight to ten inches and now i'm into some good soft soil all the time be mindful of the fact that it might be a pipe down there or a drain pipe, water pipe, or an electric cable. There shouldn't be in theory. Occasionally, change direction. Go at it from a different angle. And you make a bit more progress every time. Every spade of soil that you remove from the hole is a spade less that you've got to dig. And it soon gets quite easy and into a rhythm. I'm going quite deep there now, and the hole is getting narrower, so I'm going to a narrower spade, and that just slices in, and not before much time at all, I'm already almost two foot, I would say, well let's test it, I shall get my patented depth gauge not quite there take a bit more out this is where one of those trench spades would be a better tool and i could i could buy one actually i can afford them but i'm just using the one i've already got right i'll put a link to a trench spade 
in my Amazon storefront, but I don't have one. I'm just using a regular garden spade. Yeah, deep enough now. Now another little tip, which again might seem obvious, don't pile it too near the edge because it just falls back in. Get the earth away. Get it away from the, the edge so that when it rolls down that mound, it's not rolling back into the hole that you've dug. Interesting fact actually, when I was digging a hole in the garden, I found a load of old bottles and I was told by a subscriber that I've dug into a Victorian bottle dump and some of the bottles are actually valuable. One of them apparently might even be worth 70 quid. Now I'm 57 going on 58. I'm not a young man. And I know that if my mum's watching this, as she invariably does watch my videos, she'd be sending me a message now saying, oh, do take it easy. Don't overdo it. And I think that's really good advice. Take your time. Have a break. Come back to it. And also, if you've not done any exercise for a while, do take it easy. And do a bit of a warm-up before you start. I'm in reasonably good shape because I've been doing quite a bit of digging recently. But if you're not... Don't go killing yourself for the sake of digging a trench. Look at that. In no time at all. We're two foot deep. If I keep going away and coming back, in no time at all, I'll have a trench that goes all the way from there to there. I'll be able to look at it with a great deal of satisfaction and think to myself, I dug that trench. Now, just in case you're interested in my garage conversion journey, as it were, I've just done a video on how I've planned and scoped out the whole project. It's a way of taking out the unknowns and the stresses and having a plan. And I'll put a link to that video in the description box below this one, along with the link to my storefront and along with the link to the, the points that I've covered in this video. Hope that's been useful. If you're an established trench digger, I will have been speaking the obvious if you're a beginner like i was there may have been a couple of gems in there don't forget find out why your pipes and your wires and your water pipes and your drains are first see you soon for some more house and garden adventures bye for now mm -hmm.